Okay, so what we're looking at here are circles and central angles. So now, if you have these notes printed, that is fantastic. You can go along with them. And if you don't, just follow along the best that you can. Okay, so we're looking at this circle and we want to name the following things. So we're looking for a central angle. So anything that has X as its center. So if I pick this as my central angle, this angle here, that is angle A x b remember with angles you always use capital letters okay so now let's talk about a semicircle so a semicircle is going to go halfway around the circle so here is a diameter in this picture so halfway around the circle is here so the semicircle is the piece of the arc out here that we're talking about so this is going to be d towards the A and towards the B, because I just outlined that half, and then I put that arc notation on the top of it, kind of connecting them like that. Okay, now let's look and see what is a minor arc and what is a major arc. So when I'm looking at a minor arc, this is going to be something that is less than 180 degrees, and a major arc is going to be something that is greater than 180 degrees, and by the way, a semicircle is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So when I'm looking at this picture and I want to get a minor arc, a minor arc could be this piece right here, something that goes less than halfway around the circle. So A, B, like that. Now, something that is a major arc has to go more than halfway around the circle. And guys, it has to go more than halfway. And I'm going to use three letters. So when I look at this, I can say, hey, what if I wanted to go all the way from here to here? So I can name this lots of different ways. I don't need to say D, C, B, A. I'm going to say maybe D, C, A, or I could call it D, B, A. And then don't forget that notation, that little arc that goes on the top of it. Okay, so I hope this helps you understand naming the angles and the arcs. Okay, our next big idea is this. Guys, when you have a central angle, it is equal to the measure of the arc. So whatever the measure of the angle is, if we're talking about the central angle, is the same as the measure of the arc. Only if this is, let's just be super clear, a central angle. So a central angle is the same as arc. So see this central angle here, PRS, or excuse me, RPS, it's equal to 110 degrees. So what's the measure of this arc that goes along here? Um, here you go, crazy easy. It's exactly the same as the arc. Okay, remember when we had an angle addition postulate or a segment addition postulate, and it said, hey, if you know two little pieces, you can add them up and get the great big piece. The same is true of the arcs. So if I'm trying to find an arc, I can add up the little pieces and get the big measurement of the big arc. So when I look here, the first thing I wanna remember is that going all the way around the circle it's going to be 360 degrees. So if I'm missing a piece, kind of like I am down here, I could add up those pieces and subtract from 360 to find it. Now, here what we have to do is we have to name each one. Is it major, is it minor, or is it a semicircle? So all we have to do is look at the picture or look at the numbers that we get for our answer for that. So QT. That means from here to here. Well, the measure is 120 degrees. That's less than halfway around the circle. So that is a minor arc. Look at the measure of the central angle is 120 degrees. So the measure of the arc is exactly the same. So that's also just equal to 120 degrees. Now let's look at from S to T to R. So now we're adding up all of those pieces. So this is just going to be 80 plus 120 plus 60. So that is going to be 260 degrees, almost around the whole circle, just missing that one little piece. Now, that's way more than halfway, and it's three letters. I guess that could have been a dead giveaway also. This is a major arc. Okay, now let's look at this next piece. 
S T Q. Well, that's even smaller. So all I have to do for this one is add up the 80 and the 120. So that is 200 degrees. Now, that's more than 180. Plus, I can tell because if I went straight and this was a diameter, this semicircle would be 180 degrees because that's half of the 360. And since that's going further around more than that, I know that this is going to be a major arc. Plus, I can look at the fact that there were three letters, and I know for sure that's going to be a major arc again. All right, last but not least in this section, now let's try and find SR. So SR is this missing piece here. So it's going to be 360 minus all those other pieces, the 80 and the 120 and the 60, which I already know from up here, add up to 260. So I can subtract that and I get 100 degrees. So the measure of that SR is 100 degrees. It's less than half. So it is a minor arc. Okay, I hope this is getting easier. You can add up the little pieces if you need to, to get a bigger arc. Or if you know the central angle, it's exactly the same as the arc measurement. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to remember some stuff that I'm thinking, I'm hoping you already know. Vertical angles, ones that are across the what I call the V from each other, they have the same measurement, okay? And if I have two that are on a line, so two angles on a line, they're a linear pair, these two here, together those babies are going to add up to 180 degrees. So this is going to help me figure out the missing pieces in this situation. Okay, let's look at this first one. So AB, the first thing I'm asked is what is this little minor arc AB? Well, the central angle is 44 degrees, so it is also 44 degrees. Pretty straightforward. The next thing I'm asked is, what is CD? So if you notice, this, these angles are vertical angles. So that means that this arc CD is exactly the same because the vertical angles are congruent. So that means this angle inside here is the same. So now I know come on. I know that this piece here is 44 degrees. So now I want to figure out what A, B, C is. So I'm going to go, okay, from A to B to C. So going around here. Well, do you notice that this is a diameter because it goes through the center, a cord going through the center, the line segment going through the center. So that means that A, B, C is a semicircle. Half of a semicircle, or half of a circle, is 180 degrees. Plus, look, this would be a straight line, so it would be 180 degrees. Now, if I know that whole thing is 180 degrees, and this portion here is 44, right? I can just do 180 minus 44 to figure out what this piece is find out that this is 136. So when I'm looking at this, I know that this piece here is 136 because I knew that this piece up here was already 44 and together those two had to add up to 180. Okay, now I'm looking at trying to find out what A, B, D is. So starting at A, going towards the B, all the way to the D. See those little pieces that it's all adding up? It's 44 plus 136 plus 44. So we're using the arc addition postulate to figure out, hey, it's going around those three little things. That's going to become 224 degrees. Okay, last but not least, we're trying to find this missing piece. Oh, no, not. B to D to A. So from B towards D all the way to A. So this is everything except this 44 degrees. So remember the whole way around the whole circle is 360. So I can take 360 and just subtract out that 44 to get my answer here 
of 316 degrees. So I could have figured out what this piece was here and then added them all together, or I can subtract it to figure it out. Okay, a couple of things going on here. So we have a circle graph and we have percentages that apply to specific things. In this situation, we're talking about types of graphs. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what the measure of the arc is. So the first thing you got to remember is the entire circle is, remember, 360 degrees. So these are percentages of 360 degrees. Now, the second thing we need to remember is how to write a percent as a decimal. So remember, if I'm looking at um, 65%, to write that as a decimal, it's going to become 0.65. So if I'm finding 65% of the whole circle, to find that arc measurement, it's just 65% times 360, or 0.65 times 360. So all I do is I'm going to take, um, what I'm, when I'm trying to find this, I'm going to take the percent as a decimal, as a decimal, and I'm going to multiply it by 360 degrees, and that's going to give me my answer. So when I look at this first one, I'm like, hey, KLF, KLF, that is 65%, so that is 0.65 times 360. All I'm doing is I'm changing this percent as a decimal. This is going to tell me that this R is 234 degrees. Now let's look at the next piece. The next one it asks about is FG. FG is 20%. 20% as a decimal is 0 0.20. Changing that percent as a decimal, multiplying 20.20 times 360 is going to give me that arc measurement of 72 degrees. Okay, now let's, oopsie, come on, let's do it. Oh, I wanted to erase this. It's taking a little bit longer. No, 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 it won't let me. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'll let it win. Okay, now GH. GH is 8%. Now here's a real trick. 8% is not 0.8. It is 0 0.08. So remember, you move the decimal place twice. So all I'm doing is writing 8% of the decimal, 0.08 times that. Now, don't be afraid of a decimal for, de a decimal for the arc length. That's okay. 28.8. All right, last one. Hope this is getting easy. All I'm looking here is from F to H. So from F to H, well, it's 20% plus it's 8%. So what is that? That means that section is 28%. So just like the arc addition, I can add those percentages. So it's just going to be 0.28, because that's 28%, times 360. And that is going to tell me that this arc length is 100.8 degrees. So again, all you do for this is you write down whatever the percentage is as a decimal, and you multiply it by 360, just reading the chart. Okay, I hope this has helped you with circles and central angles.